Good evening, and welcome to Creative Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities. Presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight, we have an amazing special VIP guest, Portia Lee Taylor. A little bit about her. Portia is a former Miss District of Columbia, United States, who recently launched her own radio show called Tech Talk with Portia Lee Taylor on the Renee Allen and Friends show, and founder of Ed Say Yes, LLC a woman-owned tech startup that aims to revolutionize the way technology is used to help professionals achieve the perfect work-life balance with innovative tech-based products, like her newly launched planner that can charge your phone on the go. Say Yes Planners at www.sayyesplanners.com and website design and digital marketing agency for small business and entrepreneurs at www.sayyescareer.com. Before being a beauty pageant queen and being a part of the 4% of women of color to shatter the stereotype of owning a woman-owned business in the technology field in the U.S. today, she was an adolescent from Fayetteville, North Carolina, that faced many adversities like being homeless, losing a brother to gun violence, and being a caregiver for her late grandmother who suffered from dementia. Through these life-changing situations, she became focused on evolving herself to become her best version in hopes to change her life and others. During her sophomore year of high school in Lumberton, North Carolina, where she enjoyed cheerleading in JRTC, she was accepted into Robeson Early College High School, the first STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math school program in North Carolina at Robeson Community College to offer undeserved and underrepresented students paid access to an associate degree while in high school. While there, she found her love for technology through coding and becoming the SGA president, who's who's among high school students, beta club member, and advanced her college degree in business administration while accomplishing her personal goal of being ranked number one in her high school academically during her senior year. She went on to attend North Carolina A&T State University and graduated with a bachelor's degree in journalism and mass communications with a concentration in public relations. While there, she became Miss 1911 of the Mu Psi chapter of Omega Psi Phi, president of the largest student academic organization with over 140 student members of NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists, member of PRSSA, NAACP, and even obtained six internships before graduating. After graduating college, Portia took a leap of faith and moved to Washington, D.C. with one suitcase, $300, and slept on her sister's couch while searching for her next career move. Four years later, as a resident in our nation's capital, she has accomplished being an advocate for her late grandmother by becoming the Alzheimer's ambassador to Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, junior board member of the NCA chapter of Alzheimer's Association. She's helped raise $3.1 million for research in March of 2016, told her story on Fox 5 DC, lobbied on Capitol Hill with Miss USA 2016, Olivia Jordan, and was later crowned Miss District of Columbia, United States 2016, and placed top 10 in Miss United States. Since then, she was, has traveled internationally to countries like Guatemala to help co cope children suffering from poverty and limited access to pro proper education and also work with top companies in the tech industry like Adobe. She is now taking initiatives to promote women and girls in technology and entrepreneurship. Her motto and quote is, say yes to your dreams, say yes to you. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Portia Lee Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was an intro. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. You are me. welcome. So you have an amazing <laughs> bio, as we all know and we have all heard. So would you please Thank tell you. us more about your amazing entrepreneur journey? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I my fam I come from an entrepreneurial family. Um, my grand grandmother was an entrepreneur, so was my grandfather. Um, my sister had her own brick and mortar by the time she was 25. So I've always been kind of around that 
entrepreneurial spirit, being around family members that seeing them have that drive and that passion to want to see something come to fruition, whether it was just an idea or it was something they were extremely passionate about and now they wanted to be able to call it their own. Um, and so I think that was one of the main reasons why I really wanted to start this entrepreneur journey. Now, coming in to say yes, and I tell this story all the time, is that it really started from a dream. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> um, but it really did. I promise you it did. Um, I had this dream, and I could just see myself. I was just standing up. I was talking at seminars. I was really motivating people, inspiring people, and it was just such a, like, burning sensation in me when I woke up. And the only two words that I could hear the entire time in that dream, Ashley, was say yes, say yes. I love Those it. Those are the only two words I could hear. And when I woke up, I immediately just jumped online, and I already knew how to create websites. So I've been coding since 16. Um, I was in a STEM program. Um, it was um, – you had to, like, do an um, – interview and, you know, get uh, recommendations and all of that in high school in order to be a part of that program. Um, but while there, they actually pay for you to get your associate's degree and you go through an entire STEM program. And so I started learning how to tip code when I was there, absolutely fell in love with the creativity of just seeing all of that be able to come to place whenever you put these numbers and, you know, just symbols together and you see what you can actually do with it. I just fell in love with it myself personally. And so I just started doing it. Plus my brother also um, is in cybersecurity. So we already both have a knack for it, and it just kind of just works for me. Um, so me being able to make websites when I woke up from that dream was like, let's get it. I want to start this business right now. It was just something in me that was like, if I don't do it now, I don't know what the future may hold for me. And that's kind of where that entrepreneur journey starts taking place. And so I tell anyone that when you have a passion in you, when you have a burning sensation in you, get started right then. Don't wait. Because before you know it, you might see someone else that has that same journey as you, and you're like, oh, man, I wish I would have stayed doing it. <laughs> you start thinking like, oh, man, I, I could be here by now. You know, you yes. start seeing that. And it's because you didn't mm -hmm. have enough faith and belief in yourself. And you have to start having that early on. You know, you can't just allow that just to be something that's in conversation. You can't allow it to just be pencil and paper. You really have to put action behind it, and you really have to believe in yourself because when you start putting that out into the universe, I'm a huge believer that what you put out there, it does come mm -hmm. back to you. And so when you start spreading that positive energy, when you really start asking the right questions to, to the answers that you really want, then you start being able to clarify exactly what you're going after, and it makes it so much easier. <laughs> so much easier yeah. to get there. You may have your challenges along the way. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're willing to see it through and you're willing to see yourself there, you will eventually get there. But it is your journey. It's not going to be like anyone else. You can get advice from them, but don't always think that your journey is going to end up exactly like theirs because you're going to adapt to that completely differently. And that's what you should fall in love with even more is a transformation of yourself that happens throughout that journey. And for me, it's being an entrepreneur because I've been able to be creative with who I am and how I utilize my business for what I actually love to do. And in the end, I also see the beauty that other people are able to either use my product and see like, wow, this actually does work for me and that's a great feeling. Or if they use my service on the website design and the um, digital marketing, I get to see their business grow. And that's amazing because at one point, I was just where they were, just at an idea. And now mm -hmm. I've been able to take what's in me and spread that on to them and now see them take their business, turn into a brick and mortar, actually go and hire employees. That's an amazing feeling to be a part of that yes. journey. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So all of that is what keeps me going to this day, absolutely. Well, you have, like I said, an amazing journey that you have had, and thank, thank God that you followed your dream, you know. Even if, <laughs> you know, say yes came from a dream, but you brought it into fruition <laughs> and, and you executed, right? And, and that's you know, how my motto is, say yes to yes, your dreams, say yes, yes to you. <laughs> yes, I love it. So I'm so thankful, and we're all thankful that you did it, because what if you wouldn't have followed your, your heart and your passion? You wouldn't be where oh, you yeah. are today, and that's and that's for all of our listeners that are listening, like she stated, when you have a passion, go for it. Do it scared, do it afraid, but do it, right? Because you don't want to yeah, be later on down the road wishing, wishing woulda, coulda. You want to go ahead yeah. and do it. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. So I love it. So you are the yeah. our former Miss District Columbia of, U, of the United States. So would you yes. please share with our listeners how you accomplished such an amazing goal? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I have to say, um, being Miss District of Columbia was a dream come true for me. I have been wanting to um, just have that type of title for over 10 years. I have been competing up until that point. Um, mm-hmm. And so uh, when I first started out, I would see, of course, like pageants on TV, and it was always just like, oh, this is really cute, this is pretty. But I really saw girls that looked like me, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that was the hugest thing for me. So I saw the beauty, but I saw the beauty of the girls that were a little bit more lighter skin, maybe hair a little bit more straighter, and that just wasn't me. And I, But I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't realize that at that time that I probably would also be kind of like breaking into you know, another industry where now beauty is being seen in a different light, mm-hmm, especially mm-hmm. within the U.S. You know what I mean? Like American beauty yeah. is not just the blonde hair, blue eye anymore. You know what I mean? Like just right, not saying right. it in a negative way, but it, that used to be a typical standard of beauty at one point. And now that's being spread across the board because diversity and inclusion is such a huge factor now. And so mm-hmm. that's why I'm so glad that even back then, I fell in love with the art of beauty pageants. It wasn't just seeing the girl on stage in a cute bikini and a nice dress, although that was cute. But when I really started competing in pageants and seeing that these girls had to have a platform, they had to be passionate about something, what was it that actually happened to you? Tell me about yourself. What does it actually mean to be you? That's going to be different for every single girl that competes in a pageant or just completely in life. And so it allows you to just kind of discover who you actually are and what kind of wakes you up every day. And so for me at the time, um, I had lost my grandmother to um, dementia. And Mm -hmm. when I lost her, it was very interesting because I was actually competing in a pageant during that time. Mm. So I was competing for, um, and you actually mentioned the title in my introduction, Ashley. Um, I was competing for... um, the title for Miss Omega Sci-Fi, for the new mm-hmm. title of Omega Sci-Fi at North Carolina A&T, and mm-hmm. I was Miss 1911. And my mom showed up, in which I was surprised because I wasn't expecting her to show up because my grandmother had been sick for some time. So she was there, um, her best friend was there, and my sister showed up. And I was like, well, it's great. I'm so glad that they're here. I just was right. expecting them to come. <laughs> yes. So... You know, I, I get there, you know, I kill the pageant, you know, I, I'm crowned this 1911, I'm up there on the court, you know, it's an amazing feeling, and after the pageant, we go, we get in the car, and we go back to my dorm room, and um, I'm sitting in the car, and my mom turns around, and my sister turns around, and um, my, I think my, yeah, my, my, one of my friends was with me, and my mom's best friend had got out of the car because they were sitting in the back seat, with me, and they were standing on the outside of the car, kind of like barricading the back door almost, which kind of mm-hmm. was like, I was like, what's going on? So my mom turned around, and she was like, well, baby, I came up here because um, she was like, we lost, we lost your grandmother. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, this, what are you, what are you talking about? She was like, yeah, she passed away. And I was just like, this, this can't be happening. I just, you know, in my brain, I can't think right. that in this right now. You know, I just competed in the pageant. I just won. This is supposed to be kind of like a highlight for me. Now you're telling me just within moments that it's happening that I lost my, you're like my, half my heart. On top of that, my birthday is in like two days. My twin brother and I, because it's October the 12th, but my twin brother and I birthday is October 14th. And I have midterms that are literally about to start, like, the next week right after this. I am, like, literally. <laughs> right. My brain is, like, go- I-, I cannot fathom just everything that is literally just bombarded on top of me. But this right here was, like, the number one thing that I just could not understand why it was happening. Um, and mm-hmm. it was really, really hard to get through at that point. Um, so, Long story short, I ended up using that as my platform because I wanted my grandmother's voice to be known. When my grandmother passed away, actually, I had no idea that she passed away from dementia. I just thought she had, like, an old person disease. She was kind of, like, you know, just losing her way. She didn't really know who I was anymore. She didn't really know who my mom was anymore. We were just, you know, all taking care of her. When I would come home from, like, Christmas or spring break, I wasn't going to hang out with friends. I was going home to take care of my grandmother. 
just mm. I loved her that much. This is what I owe to her was to go back and make sure that I could be able to take care of her at any given time that I was around her. Um, and so, you know, after her passing away, I was like, I just don't want this to go unknown. So I went and I asked my mom, could I have a copy of her death certificate? And that's when I saw that she passed away from dementia. And so when I looked mm-hmm. it up online and I started noticing that, you know, there were so many African Americans that were twice to three times as likely to be affected by this disease, I was like, wait a second, what's, what's, what's the bigger picture here? What's really right. going on in the African American community, African American community that I don't know about? And the women are twice as likely to get um, to also um, have this disease as well. And so I'm like, well, I'm a woman, I'm African American, and I have a grandmother that's been affected by this disease. I need to do something about this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that's what allowed me, I think, to really be able to propel my platform going into competing for Miss District of Columbia and really be able to make a presence for myself, going and raising the $3.1 million, being up there, lobbying on Capitol Hill. Um, a lot of that was done before I was even Miss District of Columbia because I was more passionate about this platform than it was having a crown or a sash. You know, that was icing on the cake for me being Miss District of Columbia because then that allowed me to have people to recognize me. But at the same token, I wanted people to know that this is something I always stood for and I was trying to make it more than just a local awareness, but a national awareness. And I could do that becoming Miss District of Columbia. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for creating that space. And I'm sure your grandmother is smiling down from heaven <laughs> for being able to give back. And create I that love her space. so much. And yes. I love her. Absolutely. Yes, I know you do. I know you do. And I know she's smiling, like I stated, and you use that to create a space to help other people be aware of it, right? That that, yeah, that wasn't educated on it. And not only did you do it locally, but you did it nationally. So oh, yeah. as, as I say to you done some amazing things and this platform and tell me what how so once you became Miss Digital Columbia, what are some things that you did under the platform with it since you created it? Oh my goodness. Um so after doing that, we um the chapter that I was a part of, the um National Capital Area Chapter, we created a um, junior chapter board. And so Mm -hmm. being a part of that board, we also created local fundraisers within the community. Uh, We were able to raise even more money to make a lot of awareness, be able to have scavenger hunts, um, really be able to lobby a lot more on Capitol Hill, attend a lot more meetings and have those things here. I was able to speak on the forum in front of like 2,000 people and actually share my grandmother's story there. Um, Mm. And one of the interesting things, that I discovered while I was there was that a lot of the people that attending there were a lot older than me, of course. And I remember seeing a young boy running around. I was like, why is there a little kid here? No one is really, you know, everyone's a lot older here. So I asked him, I said, hi. And I was like, why are you here? And he said, my daddy's here. And I said, well, why is your daddy here, sweetie? And he said, because my daddy has early onset Alzheimer's. And I was like, really? So I went and talked to his dad. His dad was only 28. Mm. The youngest person to be diagnosed with this disease is 27. So when you're around this age, people don't understand that this is not an old person's disease. And that's the typical stereotype that I wanted to be able to shatter during my platform as Miss District of Columbia. That's where it started turning, where it just wasn't about my grandmother's story, but it was also letting people know that older people are not the only ones who are being affected by this disease. Right. So, and that's what I wanted to really be able to highlight, that there was a myth that was sitting there that this is not an old person's disease. Um, And more people needed to, you know, just be aware that anyone that has a brain, quite honestly, needs to understand that it can be affected by this. There's no discretion of color, of age, of your sexual orientation. (laughs) It doesn't matter. (laughs) Right, right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing to be afraid of. But it was also being able to highlight during that time I was doing a lot of different events on seminars. I started planning that, doing vision board events to help people just be able to clarify your goals, be more excited about life. Because when you're more excited about life, you'll be able to start doing the things that can honestly mitigate you from being even in contact with this type of disease. And it's simple things, working out, eating healthy, drinking water, stressing free, 
you know, doing a lot of those simple things that we kind of forget because we start putting our career in front of ourselves sometimes and we don't have a balance (laughs) can honestly Mm -hmm. start taking Mm -hmm. away from us. And we don't realize that when we're doing that day after day, that becomes week after week, month after month, year after Mm -hmm. year, years after years. And before you know it, you become completely ran down. And all you put before you is everything else but yourself. And that's what you end up just taking away from life is just you, you never valued yourself in the process of this. And that was one of the things that being Miss DC, being an entrepreneur, is why I decided to continue with my business and find ways where people could create some type of balance, just being a professional and being able to balance that also with their personal life because it really does matter and it is truly important. Yes, it is. And that self-care, you spoke on that more than once. Yes, it's so important that we have that balance <laughs> and that we have that self-care because yeah. our job is going to be here when we leave this world, our, oh, you know, our businesses and all of that. So we have to be absolutely. able to take care of ourselves from the inside out because we can't pour into other people if we're not, if we're not mentally and spiritually and emotionally together. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I totally agree. And, and from doing that amazing movement, you went and found it. Say Yes LLC, a woman-owned sure tech so. startup <laughs> that aims to revolutionize the way technology is used to help professionals achieve the perfect work-life balance. So mm-hmm. would you please talk to our listeners and, and tell us more about your amazing company, Say Yes. Yes. So, you know, Say Yes has really transitioned throughout the years, and that's one of the things I really also want to speak on, Ashley, is that never be afraid to revolutionize yourself. And that that also goes for your business. Your business can start off as one thing, and it can revolutionize into something else. When Say Yes first started, it started as something completely different than what it is now. There was a little bit of headhunting in there, so I was out helping people find jobs. I was actually going out and hand-delivering resumes to companies and actually bringing the vetted candidates to them and actually helping them source through their next candidate they had working for their job or for their company. And that was a really great process for them, and it was also a company I was working for prior where I felt like that was something that they were missing, and I wanted to be able to bring that within my own company. So my company started as that type of service. And the reason why I started as that is because that was a safety net for me, although I really wanted to start with my website and design. I always wanted to go into the technology part of my company. But people kept telling me, oh, Portia, you don't have enough experience. You don't have any websites done yet that you can really show the companies for them to be wowed by your work. So don't start with that first. Just do the stuff that you can do already that you just, you know, you quit your job and just whatever, whatever. Okay, okay, great. I'll do that. And I started off doing that, but then I hated it. I felt like I was waking up doing a nine to five. It felt boring. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and just go into what I wanted to do. And that's where the say yes really came into play. And so that's where I started saying how I wanted to be to balance the two when it came to being a professional and also balancing the personal part. Um, I was Miss DC working for a company in Guatemala. I was doing IT and marketing for them um, with the company Adobe. And then I was also running my business as well. So I was running my business while I was working with that company because I was working remote with them in DC. Um, And so that's where the product part came into place. I was making the planner honestly just for myself, but in the mix mix of making it, other people end up liking it. And so that's where, long story short, the planner ended up coming into fruition where I wanted to create a planner that could charge your devices on the go, like a wearable technology, because I'm into wearable technology, and you can also be able to plan your life and just kind of have a notebook that's still professional and sleek that you can take with you anywhere you go. And that's where the Say Yes Planner came into place. So this is the product part of my business. And there's more things that I want to create, but this is more of the bread and butter that I've been working on for two and a half years, and now it's finally coming into play like I really want it to. Um, And so this is how I really want to be able to move forward with my startup and really just making my mark within professionals that really see themselves having a business, taking their idea, and really putting it out there to the world and being able to just you know, live out their dream. This is what I'm trying to do is live out my dream, and I want to see other people do that as well. There was a time in my life, Ashley, where, quite honestly, I was homeless. Our house caught on fire. We didn't have a place to stay. Literally, it was just the clothes on my back. I was a teenager. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I I really didn't understand what was going on in my life at that time. 
Um, and this was outside of losing my brother to gun violence and outside of losing my grandmother to this, you know, epidemic disease. This was way before any of that even happened, actually. And so I was already being hit with the realistic that life is very, you know, fragile and it's very short. So you better learn now to really jump on your dreams if you really want them to come true because you don't know when that clock is going to stop for any of us. And it's not about living in fear. It really is about living in faith. And if you can learn to do that first, um, you'll start mm-hmm. off a lot easier. Yeah. Yes, I love that. It's not about living in fear. It's about living in faith. I yeah. love that. That is so amazing. <laughs> Because we have to, because we have to go ahead and be able to take those risks and step out and just do it as you say and trust that God will direct our paths. And I just Absolutely. want to commend you and say super congratulations on creating that space with Say Yes with your company and also creating that planner. So how can listeners yeah. uh, purchase your planner and support you with this? Oh, well, thank you. So you can actually go to sayyesplanners.com. And on there, you can actually see there's a video, an unboxing video on YouTube with the planner. So it's about five minutes, but it actually goes through detail. And it also has like, um, the captions at the bottom, so you can read it if you need to put it on mute. Um, but it's uh, $98. It's actually on a sale right now, so it's 30% off. There's a code that pops up. All you have to do is just put your email in there, and it instantly sends you the code. It's GIFT30. Um, so you just put in GIFT30, and it'll give you the 30% off. Now, that's during the pre-sale. The pre-sale ends at the end of this month um, because the books are in the process of being shipped here and getting shipped out into homes, and everyone is going to get a chance to actually discover what it's actually like to now have the newer version of the Say Yes Planner. Um, so going there... We're also on Facebook, Instagram. Um, so any of those put, uh, social media platforms, you can find us just at Say Yes Planners. Um, and then as far as myself, I'm at Portia Lee Taylor. That's P-O-R-S-C-H-A-L-E-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R. Um, I have a lot of great, amazing things coming up, but this planner is definitely going to be one of the great things that everyone, I believe, should have with them going into the new year, um, finishing up this year, and just really just thinking about how you want to plan your life um, moving forward, and just, you know, being able to have the ease of charging your phone. Like, this is one of the our biggest headaches is our phone dying on us every day. <laughs> and this yes, is going to help yes. solve that problem, right? <laughs> yes. So we're able to charge our phone on our planner, correct? This exactly, awesome. yes. So you have a power bank that's in the back of your phone. You can charge your iPhone and your Android phone. And then you also have your third cord back there, and that's your USB. That's how you're going to be able to recharge your planner. Now, it comes with a three-foot white extension cord, so that way you don't have to have your um, planner so close to the outlet. But that's going to be able to ease you to charge it through your computer. You can charge it through any type of power box that you have that take a USB in there. It takes about three to four hours to charge, um, but it can charge your phone up to three times before you would actually need to recharge it. Now, in the front of the planner, you actually also have a wireless charging pad. So if you have one of the newer version iPhones or like a newer version Samsung, uh, like an Android phone, you can actually lay your phone there, and there's an LED button, LED button that you push in the back, and if you press that, it would actually charge your phone wirelessly. So you don't even have to have any cords to actually charge your phone, or you can charge more than one device with this one planner notebook. Oh, wow. Amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> this is an awesome, awesome planner. So, listeners, make sure you go support Portia on this genius idea. I definitely Thank will be you. getting my planner, you know, because you're right. Absolutely. We all, when our phone dies, you know, it's like the end of the world. So, it this is. Will definitely it really feels like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, and it yes. goes in two colors. So, we have the black onyx. And we also have the rose gold. So the black onyx is um, completely black. It has red on the inside of it. Um, And then we also have the rose gold, which is light pink um, leather. But it's a vegan leather on both planners. Um, And uh, it's beautiful. You have your um, file folder on the inside. And you also have business card holders on the inside. So even when you're networking, this is great to take with you when you're networking. And you can just slide your business card in there and be able to swap them in and out you know, put your calendar in there and book your meetings with you while you're in your meetings and things like that. If you want to have your phone with you, it all just ties in together. So, and it can even fit in most women handbags. So I think that was the biggest thing for me is that most people said the first time I made the first planner was to make it smaller so it could actually fit in their handbag. And this one actually does solve that problem of being able to have it 
where you can really have it on the go, especially for my women. I love it. So please yeah. go out and get your planner. Super congratulations, Portia. Yes. Super Thank congratulations. You. Now you also are a part of the 4% of women of color to shatter shatter the stereotype of owning a woman-owned <laughs> business in technology, in a technology field in the U.S. today. This is mm-hmm. huge. So please share with our listeners the steps you took to shatter the stereotype to show other black women how this can be done. So you please show, you know, tell us the steps that you took to do this. Yeah, so, you know, I, I went and did the research because when I actually saw this, quite honestly, I was, I was shocked. I said, 4%? Are you kidding me? So I was looking it up online, and I wasn't particularly looking for a number. I just wanted to see how many women are, you know, women-led small businesses that are actually in the tech field. And when I looked it up and it said that, like, Arizona State University Center, um, they have, like, a gender equality for science and technology. And they were able to find that women of color make up 80% of all new women-led businesses small businesses in the U.S., but when it comes Mm -hmm. to technology, that plummets to 4%. My mouth dropped. I said, are you kidding me? How is that so? Why is it that Mm -hmm. women are afraid to be in technology that are of color? And quite honestly, I've been in the technology realm. Like I said, I started out in coding. Uh, Even when I was in that program where there are a lot of, you know, students that look like me, not much. Mm -hmm. handful, but quite honestly, my graduating class is about 200 students. Um, uh, my graduating, uh, and, and I mean like, uh, well, actually, way less than that. The actual school was 200 students or less, but my actual graduating class was less than 15 students. Um, the school was just that small. So this is a very hand-selected group of students that were actually given this opportunity to be a part of the STEM program, and this is the first year that it actually opened up. Um, so this is a very new opportunity that was in North Carolina at the time in an area where it wanted to represent underrepresented students an opportunity they probably would not get. If it wasn't for that program, quite honestly, actually, I don't think I would have went to college. Um, it really, like, really provoked me to want to go to college, to really want to take what I got from there and this opportunity and really pursue that. Um, so that's why I'm really thankful that opportunities like that have been created um, for people like me. And now that I've been able to take that and nurture that into where I am now, I'm a little bit confused as to why women are afraid to be in this field or why they don't see it as, I don't know, as sexy as the other small businesses out there. Um, And so I want to be a part of shattering that stereotype that this is an emerging area that is a part of not just the present, but it's also a part of our future. Technology is not going anywhere. <laughs> right, right. Not today, not tomorrow, not five or ten years now. At any rate, it's going to advance as fast as we can, like, blink our eyes. And so if we don't start tapping into this, um, I think we're really going to miss a, a beautiful gem that we can really be a part of. And so that's why I really want to influence women of color to not only be a part of technology, but to also be a part of entrepreneurship and be able to use their create knowledge to create social impact within their community. Maybe, you know, within Africa there is a place that has, uh, doesn't have great electricity, and your business can be a part of doing that, and you can be able to create the creativity in that where you have a tech-based, a tech-based platform um, and you're able to really help your community have light and have energy um, and just be the influence and the role model that someone else can look up to, when you really look at the statistics in countries like that as well, you also notice that for females, they don't hit their average grade. It's like third grade. That's it. After that, they have to work from home. They have to, you know, make sure there's food on the table. They have to help mom. Um, They have to help raise their sister and their brothers. So they're not given the equal opportunity that the male is given to still be able to go to school, even if they are fortunate the opportunity to extend their education. So I think we so, all need to start just being a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. I love that. And I know, you know, you majored in journalism and mass communication, and then you are in the tech industry now. So did you know that you were going to switch over? So how did that transition happen? No, I did not know I was going to switch over. Um, 
I yeah, I had no idea. I always kept hearing people say that, oh, when you graduate, um, you may not end up in your field. And that was a serious thing for me. And that's why I completed six internships, because I wanted to figure out what do I like and what do I not like in public relations as well as in journalism. And I was able to say that out. There were certain things that I really didn't care for that I don't think I wanted to do when I got out. And there were certain things that I said, okay, this is something I really want to go into. Um, and it was more so on the public relations side of it. I really liked the fact of doing that. But also I started seeing the promotional planning, the advertising, and it really started sparking my interest. And I noticed how that kind of intertwined with the technology. Um, and so, like I said, uh, when I got to Washington, D.C., I started off in, in recruiting, and so that's kind of how the business started in headhunting. But long story mm -hmm. short, someone actually referred me to that company in Guatemala, which is a tech company, and that's how I got introduced to technology again. Um, so it kind of like reignited my energy again from STEM from when I was already coding before because I had to start coding back again and also doing their marketing for them. So it was like, whoa okay, maybe I do want to do this again. So it really didn't take mm -hmm. that long before I got right back into mixing up marketing and technology and now seeing that, that there is a way to actually have a career doing that um, and then later finding out I can actually just take this and make this to my own business. I love it. I love it. So with that being said, why do you think there is a gap with women in the tech industry? Why do you think there's a, such a big gap? Um. I, I, I don't know I don't know if the value is not being seen. Is that uh -huh. what you're saying? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, you know, I just don't know if, if the value is being seen that a woman of color can really, you know, shatter the the tech stereotype and really go in there and talk about technology and know that she can be just as respected as her counterpart that may be a white male. Um, and the mm -hmm. only reason why I say that is because I've been in this field and being in this field just the past few years when I'm sitting at an executive table, when I'm having to travel to one of these international conferences, I don't see too many women that look like me walking up and down these um, trade shows, these conferences, attending these meetings. Um, mm -hmm. And so I noticed that there is a gap there and I've always been curious to see why uh, is there not enough women of color um, sitting at the table as well. Um, and I think it's because it needs to start a lot younger. Um, when you really look at the bigger picture, when it comes to technology, who has that really been more so in the faces of? It really hasn't been a young black girl sitting in front of a computer learning how to code, is it? Right. I mean, right. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, if you, if you see that, let me know. You see it more nowadays than you do back, you know, twenty, thirty, forty years ago. You just you didn't mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. So when you start seeing that, you understand that there's a certain um, nationality that has been groomed um, for these type of careers and things like that. So they are way more advanced to already kind of have their seat at the table, um, and so now they're starting to, you know, take a step at saying, oh, I can do this as well. I do have an interest in technology. I do have an interest in wanting to make my mark in that. And I know how to do system engineering. I know how to do, you know, coding. And they're able to now start doing it. So I don't know if it's more, it's a gap there, but we are making our mark and it's happening. Even though it's at 4%, it's better than being at zero. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> and it shows me, right, right. Some improvement there. We still got more work to do, but yes, but we started. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you're very passionate about helping women in technology and entrepreneurship. So, Parsha, what are your plans? What are your plans over the next year to increase <gasps> employment for more women in the tech field? You know, I I'm in the work of starting a an organization. And the organization we base off of the acronym STEM, Sisters in Technology and Entrepreneurship Matter. Mm, like that. Yes. And I really want it to be about, um, you know, really influencing our sisters that 
this is the time to be a part of technology and entrepreneurship and really being able to show them that there are opportunities in that. Um, I love being able to host different events. Um, I've done that all across D.C. and in some parts across the U.S. And I want to continue doing that because I believe that having that face-to-face communication with our sisters is so needed at this time. Um, and this is where we really can start valuing each other. When you, you know, hey, you know, tune in, this is great, you know, for people to tune in. But when you can start having that face-to-face interaction and really show them, hey, I care, and I want to see your business flourish, it really helps motivate people in a different way, I believe. Um, and so with that, I want to create this organization to really open up opportunities to, one, show people that there are job openings out here. I want to be able to have sessions where, um, and I've done all this before, and so I'm just literally taking everything I've done and culminating it into really helping it targeting more towards my sisters in technology and in entrepreneurship. So if they're sitting down helping them with their resume, helping them get their um, interview skills up, really helping them launch their business, giving them the tools and the resources of how to go out there and get into the technology field, if it's coding, if it's learning to be an engineer, whatever it is, I want to be able to show them the tools and resources of doing that because, one, I've done it before, and I'm always driven and excited to see the success of someone else because it makes me feel even more successful in the midst of that. (laughs) Yes, But on top of that, I really think that this can really drive us as women together, and I feel like we are so much more powerful when we have our click. You know what I mean? When you have your girlfriends with you, you already know, like, yes, we are on it. We are doing this. And I think if we can start making that just a feeling of a culture growing up that we have each other's back as sisters and we make it towards this direction, I really think that we can close a lot more gaps that's not just based around gender, just based around equality in general. And just being able to say that if you were to influence more women in this, you would be able to close the economic gap. You will be able to close the gap of communication when it comes to politics. You will be able to close the um, miscommunication that happens indirectly between just male and female when it comes to just being able to understand what's fair. You know, (laughs) as you see going on right now, we have men deciding factors for women in our bodies. And so there's a huge miscommunication that's being drawn there and a lack of, honestly, in my opinion, respect. And so I want to be able to create this avenue of sisters coming together and being able to say there is no bridge. We are just going to lay this new foundation that we are a part of this and we can be known and that the next time I go to a conference, or the next time I sit at the board meeting, I'm not the only sister that looks like me that's at the table of an entrepreneur or a technology platform. Well, I just want to commend you for creating more seats at the table for women in tech. This is amazing, your initiatives that you want to do to create that space, yes, to reach back and pull forward because that is what it's all about, right, creating that space. And not only have you done that, Portia, but you have a radio show as well for women in tech. I do, So can you talk more about your radio show? I do. So I have a radio show called Tech Talk with Pressure Lee Taylor. It's on the Renee Allen and Friends show. I am so excited about it. Um, I host it monthly in D.C., and it's on um, a radio platform similar to this, but it's live, and so it's also broadcasted as a live radio show. And so um, on the radio show, I really like to talk about just really engaging the audience about tech tips. Um, I talked about recently my um, last show was about uh, the importance of um, your personal data and being able to protect that. Um, we don't do that enough nowadays. We leave our phones unlocked. You know, we don't change our passwords. We just leave them out there. We get exposed through our credit cards and stuff like that. And we don't think about the importance of just making sure that our personal information is secure. Things get leaked all the time, even from the largest of companies out there and we have to be more cognizant of that. And outside of that, just other fun things, you know, just, you know, cool um, apps on your phone, uh, different things that you probably didn't know that your phone can actually do. You can take uh, hand-free selfies on your Android phones and things like that. So it's really just about going on there, spreading the knowledge of technology, showing that it's not, 
you know, scary. I don't think of IT in the words of information technology. I think of it in the words of innovative technology. And that's what I want to be able to spread is that technology is innovative. It's happening. It's a part of us every day. Um, literally, we touch about five different things in our life that's happening to technology, our phones, our laptop, our remote, our, you know, our keys. You know, there's so many things that literally hold technology. And so the more that we can start, you know, being more of a friend to it and not being afraid of it, it really can help simplify different parts of our life. And that's what I want to be able to show people. Awesome. So will you please tell yeah. them again how they can uh, listen to your show? And do you do guests and how people can possibly be a guest on your show? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned that. So it's, I'm sorry, it's hosted on, um, you can go to the link. It's called listenvisionlive.com, and it's hosted on WLBS Radio. So I go in there once a month. It's generally the first Wednesday of the month. Lately it's been on the third Wednesday of the month. Um, but I go on my um, Facebook. You can be able to follow me um, at Portia Lee Taylor right on Facebook. And I always post it on there. And it's always on Renee Allen and Friends Show. Um, and so you can see it also on YouTube. If you put in Renee Allen and Friends Show, you can actually go there and see any of the past shows and be able to catch up on some of the things that I've already talked about. It's been airing since about February. So it's a very young show, but I'm really, really excited. Um, that, you know, every month I get a chance to talk about, you know, what I do. I am going to be looking for guests, so I'm actually going to be posting that very soon. I'm looking for guests that either have a passion in technology or they have a career in technology right now. So you're either an entrepreneur or you work a nine-to-five in the technology space. You're some type of subject matter expert in this field. Um, and then maybe you do this also for a social impact. Um, I want to be able to bring them on the show and hear their story. So I'm actually going to be launching a podcast soon. Um, it's going to be on Spotify and iTunes. And on that show, I actually want to bring people, and it's still going to be Tech Talk with Portia Lee Taylor, um, but it's going to be more of an extended version of what I have on the WLBF radio because that's more of a five- to ten-minute show. But my podcast is going to be about up to half an hour. And so I want to be able to bring guests on this platform and be able to share their story and be able to speak with them just like you and I are speaking and really be able to spread the knowledge of technology and entrepreneurship and get that message out there. I love it. So please support yeah. her, listen to her show. Absolutely. You know, if you would like yes. to be a guest, if you fit the <laughs> criteria, reach out to her. And super congratulations on your podcast that you're getting ready to launch. Yes, absolutely. If anyone is interested and you would like to get more information, you can just go to my other website, Outside of Say Yes Planners, which is where you can purchase the planner at. You can go to sayyescareer.com, and at sayyescareer.com, you can just go to our sign-up, which is at the very bottom, or it just pops up when you go to the page, and you can put in your name and your email and say you're more interested in learning how you can be a guest on the Tech Talk this Portia Lee Taylor show, and we'll be able to get right back to you in like 24 to 48 hours. But I am super excited to get this session started. This season started with Tech Talk. Um, I think it's going to be amazing, and I'm just glad to just be able to have this opportunity to just really spread knowledge and the funness of technology and just make more people aware um, that we are in this space, and we are going to really yeah. take that 4% and propel, and I'm just happy to be a part of it now. Um, because this is only just the beginning. Yes, it is. And thank you again for creating the <laughs> space and creating your show to thank help you. close that gap as well. So I yes, always absolutely. ask all of my guests, how did you create your seat at the table? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. If, do I have a seat at the table? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I created this uh, this post one time, and I said, um, I, what did I say? I'm not a seat at the table. I am the table. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I feel as though, you know, you do have to create your seat at the table. It's not about someone giving you a seat. Um, I really don't think that I've been given anything in life. I am very humble and fortunate to say that if I have seen something that I have wanted, I have went out there and made it happen. I have gotten on my knees. I have prayed to God. I have meditated and really put myself in a space to go after what it is that I want. If that means that I have to, you know, take some things away from me because at some points in life you don't realize certain people can't go with you. 
You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> certain mm-hmm. things can't mm-hmm. follow you when you're going in a certain mm-hmm. direction. And yes. when you can start be more cognitive of that now, you can really start propelling yourself mm-hmm. a lot further, faster now if you start doing that. Um, and that doesn't mean that you have to cut that person off severely. Maybe they're just not supposed to be a part of your life at this present time. Sometimes when you're going in a certain direction, everything just can't go with you. And the lighter your load, the better it is. Yes. <laughs> Trying to I get agree. there, okay? Yes, 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 yes. We have to learn that, you know, and that's part of yes. getting to the next level. I agree. For yes, you. absolutely. <laughs> when you're trying to get to the top of Mount Everest, you can't go there with a big, you know, uh, backpack on a 20-pound backpack. You're not going right. to make it, okay? It's just going right. to end up being just you. And so I believe that creating my seat at the table means staying focused, staying humble, um, staying resilient, also just being able to have courage to know that I have a voice to know that mm-hmm. I am a woman of color and when I'm in this field that I'm not thinking about, you know, what I don't have. I'm thinking about the fact that I am here and I'm going to end up being able to take everything I know right now and use that to the best of my abilities. And I I'm love that I always continue to stay passionate. I think every day you should be trying to create your seat at the table. Sometimes people create a seat at the table and they get comfortable. Okay, well, you start off with a rocking chair, but let me tell you something. When it's time to handle business, you need to be sitting up straight. That means you need to always be recreating that chair every single time you get a chance to do that because that's going to help sharpen you and get you more prepared, more now than ever, to be exactly where you want to be. When I go to my office, people are like, oh, my gosh, you're dressed up every day because, honey, I'm not dressing for who I am now. I'm dressing for who I'm trying to become. And when you start putting yourself in that mindset now, oh, you put yourself a lot more further than where you're actually trying to get to. Trust me. And when, by the time you get there, you're going to be like, wow, I did not expect this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But positioning yes. ourselves is so important, yes. right? Positioning ourselves Absolutely. for that next level. Yes. If that's where you're trying to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. And not only creating our seat, but buying the table, you know? Yes, honey. <laughs> You buy the table, you can make your own seat. Yes, yes. So what can we expect from you, Portia? The rest of 2019, quarter one, you have already over-exceeded. We're in quarter two. So what can we expect from you the rest of 2019, the Portia Taylor? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, um, outside of, you know, still running my business, um, doing my tech talk show, getting ready to also put it on another platform where now it's going to turn into a podcast as well, um, doing other events like this because I'm still going around D.C. and other areas doing interviews right now, which is very exciting because this is the thing that I've always wanted for my company. But like we said mm-hmm. in the beginning, if you don't start somewhere, you're never going to get mm-hmm. to this point. And right. what I tell people is sometimes in the beginning, you're like, oh, I want to be able to do all that stuff as soon as I start. But what story do you really have to tell? Right. Like, mm-hmm. let's just really be honest. Right now, I'm able to feed you all of this and anyone that's listening all of this because I've been there. I've done this. I'm probably feeding too much information. I don't know. But at the same token, I've been there. So I'm not telling you anything that I've made up. I'm telling you from experience that if you want it, it's yours to have. You just have to go and get it. <laughs> yes. And so yes. some of the things that are next for me is, like I said, starting my organization, continuing to do things like this. I also went out on top of doing that. People are like, how do you have the time? But I also went out and um, got a job at a, one of the largest IT electronic companies globally. It's called Aero Electronics and MX Group. So I now also uh, work within the public sector, um, and it's absolutely amazing because one of the things that I realized that being an entrepreneur and you're doing it sometimes on your own, you sometimes may hit some of the glass ceiling. You know, it, it happens. I'm just being very honest. Sometimes you kind of extend, you know, extend your resources and you're kind of like, oh, man, I don't know who else to talk to or where else to go or who else to network with or what's my next move. It happens. And so sometimes you have to start tapping into other resources. And so for me, I'm not afraid to be able to say, hey, I'm going to go out here and really put myself to work and just create different challenges for myself. And so I've been able to have this wonderful and amazing opportunity to be 
with his top, top Fortune 500 company, 109, and to be with them and to understand so many different things within the technology realm, within the government realm, within just federal and the public sector, it's absolutely amazing. And now I'm going to be able to take those things and understand more about how to grow my business, other people's businesses, and just know that when I came to this company and interviewed with them, one of the great things is my company was on my resume, and I wasn't afraid to represent my company. And I think that sometimes when you're an entrepreneur and you're afraid to go out here and say, oh, now I want to work for a company, how do I transpire that on my resume? Or are they going to think I've just been sitting on my tail and haven't had a real job? No, that's a real career. If you were passionate about that, that was a career. Put that on your resume <laughs> and make that your business. That is what you're supposed to be doing. That is what you've done. And so when I got there and I was able to, you know, explain what I've done with my business and how I could make other businesses grow and how that was in the technology and marketing realm and all the other companies I work for, they were able to take me at face value like they would anyone else. And that's what I think that as women of color and anyone needs to make sure that when you walk into these other type of opportunities, walk with confidence. Tell your story. No one knows you better than you. They're not coming in here waiting, waiting for you to make up who you are. Tell them who you are. That's what makes you have diversity and be able to bring some type of inclusion into what they're looking for next. They don't need a, a, you know, a one-dimensional copycat of what they already have. They want something fresh and new. And so when you can provide that on top of being hungry for what you want, that's a breath of fresh air for a lot of companies nowadays. And also it should be for yourself as well when you have a business that you want to see thrive um, in a market where a lot of businesses fail within the first three to five years. <laughs> like you, you're going to have to stay hungry if you want to make it past that mark and see your company really propel years down the line and actually make you some type of return on investment. I love it. So would you please tell our listening audience, Portia, how they can follow and contact you? Yes, absolutely. So if you have any questions and you want to contact me, you can email me anytime at info, that's I-N-F-O, at sayyescareer.com. So that's S-A-Y-Y-E-S-C-A-R-R, sorry, E-E-R, <laughs> dot com. So sayyescareer.com. Um, info at sayyesfair.com. You can also visit my website. Like I said, if you want to see more information about our all-in-one website design and digital marketing services, that's at sayyesfair.com. That's where you can also inquire about if you are interested in being a guest on the show for Tech Talk with Portia Lee Taylor. You can inquire about that information there. If you're interested in learning more about what in the heck this planner is that sounds so amazing and I want to see it in person, I can't wait to have it in my hands, you can go to sayyesplanners.com. The information is all there about how you can order your planner with the price that they are, um, that special code I told you about for 30% off. And I'm also everyone, everywhere on social media. I mean, if you Google my name, Portia Lee Taylor, <laughs> I'm sure you will find me. <laughs> but, you know, Facebook at Portia Lee Taylor, um, Instagram, same thing. Um, I'm just really excited. And, you know, thank you, Ashley, so much for just having me on here. This is an absolute blessing to see women of color like you and I just continuing to live out our dreams, be a leader in our own life, and really just shatter any type of stereotype that they thought they put out there of us does not actually yes. exist. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I want to thank you, Portia. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule to come oh, to the table. You. And I can't wait to invite you back before the end of 2019. Oh, I would absolutely love to come back and talk to you. I'm sure we will have a lot more to talk about very soon. Trust me. Yes, we will. We're still creating. <laughs> yes, ma'am, awesome. every day. <laughs> yes. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, chatting with you more and collaborating with you more. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Ashley. And for everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. And have your seat at the table because it is yours to have. I love it. So I would like yes. to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger. I would also like to give a special thanks to Arthur Kimberly McLemore. And I would also like to give a special thanks to my intern, Sarah, from Tennessee State University, who's on the show today as well. So you all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on, underscore at, at, on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. 
Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 